Okay, last session we talked about the working day. And as I said, beyond a certain stage of development in capitalism, workers tend to be able to win a more or less normal working day and capitalists to accept that. There's always nibbling at the edges, there's always pressure, but it's within certain limits. Um, so how then are capitalists going to increase their profits if they can't just increase the length of the working day? Remember, the value of labour power is less than the new value created by labour. So if it takes uh, four hours of an average, per day on average to produce the equivalent of a living wage. Four hours of the day you're producing what covers the outlay for the capitalist of employing you and the other four hours you're working just to produce profit. Um, and you can see why the capitalist will want to make that four hours, five, six, seven. But if they can't, what can they do? And uh, the short answer is what they can do is reduce the four hours that um, are devoted to producing value which covers your wages. This can be done up to a point by reducing wages and it is built into the capitalist economy that there's a continual struggle about wages, that the level of wages is not fixed, level of the value of labour power is not fixed, there's a historical and moral element, and the level of wages is not automatically um, linked, uh, aligned with the value of labour power. In fact, uh, Rosa Luxemburg argued at some length that the function of trade union struggle is to bring wages up to the value of labour power. If you don't have a union, your wages will tend to be less than a living wage less than the value of labour power. Um, but even it, there are ways for capitalists to increase their profit, even if they're constrained, there are unions, they're constrained to pay wages at the value of labour power. There are unions, the working day is limited. And the way that happens is through Mar what Marx calls relative surplus value. Namely, that through technology, through in, uh, improved organisation of labour, through in, improved uh, intensity of labour, the time taken to produce your living wage is reduced from four hours to three hours to two hours. Um, your living wage may be more stuff, but it takes fewer hours in the day to produce that stuff. So plainly, for example... Workers today in the older capitalist countries can buy more stuff for their wages than could workers in Marx's day. Marx in his time took as a rule of thumb, which he got from discussions with Engels, who worked in a capitalist enterprise, uh, that the working day would be about 50% work to uh, cover the cost of your wages and about 50% work to create profits. As he puts it, 50% unpaid labour, 50% paid labour. Uh, the economist Fred Mosley has done a calculation that today in the USA um, it's about a quarter of the working day, so an eight-hour day, two hours, will produce the equivalent of your wages. It will produce the va value equivalent to the, your food, clothing, housing, entertainment, and so on. And the other six hours of an eight-hour day produce surplus value. They produce profit and all the other forms of income of the capitalist class, rent, taxes, interest, and so on.